Hockey is the strongest ability in One Piece, and as we approach the end of the story, it's become clearer and clearer who the strongest hockey users at the top of the ladder are. Amongst the Yonko, Marines, Celestial Dragons, and Revolutionaries, there are five characters that stand out as most definitively being a cut above the rest, the top tier of hockey that other up-and-coming characters are all chasing. Even someone like Luffy, who is very likely top five in strength overall, is not yet quite in the top five in terms of hockey specifically, as it has been explicitly established that Luffy's hockey still has a ways to go to improve. Luffy is not yet at his peak, and base Luffy without his fruit is most certainly still behind the five characters in this video. This is not a breakdown of the strongest characters in One Piece overall, as extremely powerful Devil Fruits can bridge gaps in hockey to some degree. However, if we were to strip away these Devil Fruits and any other special abilities and focus purely on hockey, these are the elite of the elite in the One Piece world. Because hockey isn't everything, it's just the most important thing. This top 5 is not in order, but before we get into it, make sure to subscribe. And if you really want to eat good food every day without ever having to cook or get takeout, you can get 50% off Factor, the sponsor of this video. Factor sends you pre-made meals that are always fresh and prepared by professional chefs and planned by nutritionists to be healthy. Factor is absolutely perfect for me because if you're like me, you don't like to cook. Cooking is time consuming and draining at the end of a long day of work, and I just usually don't have the mental energy for it. Plus, I'm not very good at it. I also quickly found that I couldn't get takeout all the time because it's expensive and it's really unhealthy. So Factor is pretty much what I've always wanted. It makes life easy and automatic. Every week I get good food, ready-made, delivered straight to me, and I never have to worry about cooking. It's also way less expensive and way healthier than takeout. The meals are genuinely really f***ing good. Like you can select meal plans or pick from tons of options individually every week. You can get steak, you can get chicken parmesan, you can get fish, you can get vegetarian options, keto options. Factor has something for you no matter what you like and it's always restaurant quality. So if you want to make your life easier, just try Factor. You get a huge 50% off discount to try out your first box. Just head to factor75.com or hit the link below and use code 50morge to get 50% off and free shipping on your first Factor box. That's code 50morge at factor75.com to get 50% off and free shipping on your first box. Link in the description below or scan the QR code. So to begin with, Mihawk is indisputably one of the five best hockey users on the planet. As the world's strongest swordsman, he simply would have to be, considering the One Piece world is filled with countless powerful swordsmen across all groups. Yonko, Admirals, Gorosei, Holy Knights, there are countless top tiers who are swordsmen. And since at the top level, swordsmanship is largely about hockey, that would mean that whoever is number one amongst all these swordsmen simply has to be one of the best hockey masters in existence. This fact alone should put Mihawk clearly in the conversation for best hockey user today, but even beyond his title as world's strongest swordsman, there is one particular feat that establishes him as not just a top tier hockey user by today's standards, but as a historically great hockey user. Mihawk has created a permanently black blade. This is arguably the single rarest hockey feat in the entire story. As in all of One Piece history, the only other character to have ever created a permanently black blade is the legendary Samurai Ryuma. And Samurai Ryuma's strength cannot be understated. Ryuma was in fact Oda's OG main character before Luffy. And in One Piece lore, Ryuma is literally known as the god of the blade. And Ryuma was in fact so strong that he scared away the entire rest of the world, including the world government, permanently from approaching Wano. So for Mihawk to have the same achievement as Ryuma in making a permanently Black Blade, and to date be the only one that we know of to have ever copied this feat, means that Mihawk may not just be one of the best hockey users of today, but possibly among the greatest hockey users in history. And what's particularly interesting is that a permanently black blade isn't the only area in which Mihawk may be unique among hockey masters. It's long been speculated that Mihawk may also specialize in observation hockey based on his epithet, Hawkeye, as well as his highly perceptive personality. But while those were simply loose pieces of evidence for good observation hockey, we then learned that Mihawk's original epithet was actually planned to be the Clairvoyant. The title Mihawk the Clairvoyant practically screams elite observation hockey user, and so it is highly possible that this may be Mihawk's true area of expertise. Finally, some have pointed out that Mihawk does not have Conqueror's Hockey listed among his hockey traits in his Vivre card, however Oda does not usually reveal important abilities that characters will display later in the manga itself in Vivre cards. For example, Garp initially did not have Conqueror's Hockey in his first Vivre card, however that was because Oda was saving this for an in-story reveal at Hachinosu, and now Garp's newer, updated Vivre card post-Hachinosu does confirm that Garp does in fact have Conqueror's Hockey. 
Mihawk is very likely in the same boat, it would be almost impossible for him to not have Conqueror's Haki considering Zoro has advanced Conqueror's Haki at this point, and Mihawk wouldn't really be able to duel Zoro effectively sword to sword without at minimum having advanced Conqueror's Haki himself. And it's been made very clear in the text that becoming the world's strongest swordsman is synonymous with having the disposition of a king and therefore having Conqueror's Haki. So Mihawk is an easy lock for top 5 Haki users at minimum. Next up, there's perhaps no One Piece character alive today who is better known for their hockey than Shanks. Shanks is, in many ways, Oda's poster child for hockey in One Piece, with the first ever tease of Conqueror's Hockey in the story being from Shanks in Chapter 1, and then the first full display of Conqueror's Hockey being again from Shanks in Chapter 434, which impressed even the world's strongest man himself. Shanks is notably the only character to have ever reached Yonko status with hockey alone, and no Devil Fruits needed. It also seems as though his Conqueror's Haki may be far beyond that of typical Conqueror's Haki users, as Shanks was able to channel his Conqueror's Haki from all the way outside of Wano's walls to reach far into the center of the entire nation and make a Marine Admiral absolutely sh** himself just from sensing it. This is the single most impressive basic Conqueror's Haki release by any character alive, considering the range and potency to completely terrify another top tier character. Interestingly, the only other feat to clearly top this was Joy Boy's hockey release which flooded the entire island, overwhelmed four top tier characters, and made God himself shit his pants. However, the crazy thing about that is that Shanks' own hockey was then in fact compared to this hockey release of Joy Boy, with the Giants legitimately unable to tell whether Joy Boy's hockey or Shanks' hockey was stronger after having experienced both. The fact that the Giants experienced both and were not able to tell which is greater means that there is no noticeable gap between Joy Boy's hockey and Shanks's, and as such, Shanks' hockey has to be at least remarkably close in strength to Joy Boy's. If Shanks' Conqueror's hockey is close to the strongest hockey user in histories, then this would make Shanks not just one of the strongest hockey users today, but one of the strongest Conqueror's hockey users to ever exist. But the real area in which Shanks is absolutely broken is in observation hockey. To begin with, Shanks is extraordinarily proficient at future sight. The extended vision that Shanks saw of Kid destroying his fleet may have been the most extended future sight vision we've ever seen a character have in a combat situation, meaning that Shanks may be even above future sight specialists like Katakuri in this category. But on top of that, Shanks also counters other characters' observation hockey, as he is known to be the killer of observation hockey. This would basically make Shanks an absolute nightmare matchup for other hockey users, as Shanks himself can see far into the future while also apparently being able to stop his opponents from doing the same. So essentially, Shanks has both the most potent Conqueror's hockey that we've been shown so far, as well as the most advanced observation hockey that we've seen so far. For the moment, Shanks remains the poster child for hockey in One Piece. Now this is by far the most controversial pick on this list for the simple reason that Garp is very old and very far past his prime. Garp tells us so repeatedly himself. However, we are evaluating characters purely as hockey users here. Note, there are two characters that I almost chose instead of Garp who are also on the world government side, but we don't have enough information for me to put them confidently above Garp in this list. Though you can get my extended thoughts explaining these two characters on my weekly podcast by becoming a member or by supporting me on Patreon, link in the description below. However, Garp is still the one who makes the list in the end. Because even if you feel that there are characters today, such as Admirals in their prime or Yonko who are above Garp overall, that's perfectly fine. But if you were to remove remove all other devil fruits and gimmicks and compare pure hockey ability and hockey ability alone, Garp is still top 5 amongst all characters that we've seen today. After all, it doesn't seem as though the Admirals have Conqueror's Hockey and they have certainly never displayed advanced Conqueror's Hockey. We don't yet know if Blackbeard has Conqueror's Hockey and have had zero indication that he does. And in fact, Blackbeard has not even shown any advanced displays of armament hockey yet. And finally, even Luffy is very new to being able to use advanced Conqueror's Hockey at all. And if we were to compare Luffy in his base form without his Devil Fruit to Garp, well the reality is that Luffy is nowhere close to doing anything like this. Luffy is not nuking entire cities with Conqueror's Hockey punches. This cannot be understated, as what has been established is that the amount of hockey that attacks are coated with is a huge indicator of their power. High level armament is so strong that it actually causes damage from a distance, and advanced conqueror's coating takes that to the next level. It's so strong that it produces an extreme visual where there is shown to be a huge gap between the point of attack and the target, as there is an even greater amount of hockey flowing out. 
We essentially had all of Wano to establish that the strongest hockey attacks are notably marked by a huge visual distance between the attack and the target. And so for being absolutely objective, Garp's Galaxy Impact is indisputably the largest scale display of advanced Conqueror's hockey coding that we have ever seen in One Piece. And it's not even remotely close. This makes sense considering the two most hyped up characters as the strongest of the last 40 years were Roger and Whitebeard, the strongest pirates ever, and Garp has been repeatedly framed as being in their same tier. So if Garp was once able to go toe-to-toe with the Pirate King, who was himself a pure hockey fighter, then that means that Garp in his prime may have surpassed all living characters today in hockey. As such, even if Garp's fallen off, I challenge you to think of five characters today who you are confident could defeat Garp in a pure hockey battle. No Devil Fruits, no regeneration gimmicks. If you can think of five, then let me know in the comments below. But first, if you're excited for Elbaf, you can get the first Elbaf travel poster ever made for your walls today. This beautiful work of art comes in both day and night versions, and is made with archival ink printed on matte paper hand cut by the artist himself. And that's not all, this month we are also releasing the Skypea and Zoe travel posters, so that you can continue building your collection of all the islands of One Piece. You can even get all three of these beautiful posters together along with the exclusive Chandra poster for a major discount bundle, which is 50% off all four posters. You can also still get the deluxe package if you want to appear on my streams, and in that case you'll get all five posters as well. So start building your collection today with Elbaf, Skypea, Zoe, and Chandra. Just hit the link in the description below. Now this is the first character who is feetless, so his inclusion might be controversial, but it really shouldn't be. Now Dragon does likely have a Devil Fruit. The Wind Logia has been mysteriously missing in the story for a long time, and every time that we have seen Dragon, he is associated with Wind Gusts and Wind Manipulation. However, having a Devil Fruit does not disqualify you from also being a top tier hockey user. The reality is that Dragon is a Monkey D in his prime. We know how strong genes are in One Piece. Ace mirrored Roger's extreme strength and potential, Yamato mirrors Kaido's. When it comes to the big three Monkey Ds right now, we see the same similarities in extreme wills and innate strength. But the reality is that Garp is past his prime, Luffy still has not quite yet reached his prime, and Dragon is the representation of a Monkey D who is actually in his prime at his full strength. It is simply impossible for Dragon to not be an insanely powerful hockey user, and in particular, an absolutely monstrous Conqueror's hockey user. Remember, Conqueror's Hockey is strongest in those with the strongest wills, and Dragon's will is literally to change the world itself and dethrone the gods. And even if Dragon has seemed too passive to readers lately, don't mistake Dragon's patience for weakness of will. Because the most important thing that was established about Dragon is that when he actually decides to move, his will is otherworldly. We know this as Ivankov recognized Luffy's absolute force of will when he makes up his mind as being the same as Dragon's. This single statement speaks volumes, as Luffy's willpower is the greatest in the entire story. Even though Luffy's actual command of Haki has not yet caught up to his extreme willpower, Luffy's willpower itself was always number one in the story from the beginning. The rest of the narrative has simply been about Luffy's strength catching up to his will. However, Dragon apparently mirrors this same will of Luffy's, and Dragon is actually an adult in his prime, with decades of growth under his belt. As such, the beast that we are still waiting to see is this fully realized version of Luffy at least in terms of Conqueror's Haki. A lot of readers don't seem to realize, but the fact that Oda has held back Dragon for so long, making him the only established top tier in the entire story to still yet to be shown in a fight, despite being one of the earliest to be introduced, means that Dragon's strength is set to be extremely special, even by the standards of everything that we have already seen. Dragon is likely going to be our first look at what a Monkey D's Conqueror's Haki looks like in their prime. And finally, we have Emu. Now, here's the complicated issue with Emu. We know that Emu must have some extremely powerful Devil Fruit, quite likely a mythical Zoan based on this transformation. However, Emu's reaction to Joy Boy's hockey was simply so pathetic and cowardly that it's hard to imagine Emu being a powerful Conqueror's hockey user himself. One of the most notable traits about Conqueror's hockey users is that they have extreme dispositions that don't ever allow them to bend or capitulate to anyone. And yet, here Emu is shaking on his knees from just the echo of an enemy long gone. There is no Conqueror's hockey user in One Piece ever who has acted like this. 
Even in defeat or in the face of death, Conqueror's hockey users are obstinate and strong. The closest I can think of is Doflamingo showing fear at the prospect of having to fight Kaido, and honestly Doflamingo is on the lowest end of the Conqueror's hockey users that we've seen in the story. So Emu's moment of weakness here is simply hard to reconcile with him being an extremely powerful hockey user. However, the catch is that we've seen a lot from the Gorosei, Emu's subordinates, that makes it likely that Emu does in fact have extremely powerful Conqueror's hockey. Each of the Gorosei were established to be Conqueror's hockey users, some of them particularly potent ones. Saturn's arrival alone caused a release of hockey that was so significant that even Luffy, Kizaru, Zoro, and Luchi sensed it from across the island. Mars displayed unreal hockey according to Jinbei, who himself has witnessed multiple Yonko. Venus Juro seems to use advanced Conqueror's hockey in combat. Warkiri unleashed one of the largest Conqueror's hockey releases ever seen in the story, dwarfing even the likes of Kaido and Big Mom, and only really falling short of Joy Boy and Shanks. The Gorosei were all extremely powerful Conqueror's hockey users themselves, and generally, Conqueror's hockey users are only subordinates to other, even more powerful Conqueror's hockey users in One Piece. It is extremely rare for any character to have even one subordinate with Conqueror's hockey, but Emu has five. Now sure, this is largely also because they all have to obey him or die, but at the same time, I don't think that symbolically Oda would have five Conqueror's hockey users be the servants of one character who just doesn't have Conqueror's hockey at all. It would also be extremely strangely underwhelming. If this were the case, that would mean that Emu, the god of the world who has ruled over everyone for centuries and is very possibly the final boss of the story, is only powerful through his devil fruit, which is near impossible in One Piece. Even Blackbeard, who has two of the strongest devil fruits in existence, doesn't quite seem to be in contention for strongest in the world yet because his hockey just doesn't seem impressive. Most feel that Blackbeard would need a third broken fruit to get to that strongest in the world status, so it's really hard to imagine Emu already being the strongest with only one devil fruit and unexceptional hockey. Generally, you simply need top tier hockey at the absolute highest level, so if Emu is set to be a character who is at least significantly stronger than his subordinates, the Gorosei, who themselves are all powerful Conqueror's hockey users, then Emu is likely to be, at minimum, one of the top 5 strongest hockey users in the world today. The Joy Boy reaction notwithstanding. So, in terms of pure hockey, no Devil Fruits, no other special abilities, no regeneration, Mihawk, Shanks, Garp, Dragon, and Emu are likely the five strongest of today that we know of. We have not yet met the God's Knights, of course, and there are two other honorable mentions that I discuss on my weekly podcast, but let me know in the comments below how you would rank the top five best hockey users of today. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe. And to get my weekly podcast explaining the two other honorable mentions, you can become a member of the channel or support me on Patreon by hitting the link in the description below.